but I leveled up. Fell victim to a sacrifice, making clever moves with my pawns and nice. Most wanted in the streets, but that's a part of life. This is the land of milk and honey, baby, stars and stripes. Tell my haters up. Yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, man, um, crazy little um, quote or comment somebody left. And you know me, I like to respond to certain comments when I feel like they can build a great subject. It allows me to step into a content and comfort zone where, you know, I love to debate. I love to express myself. I love to explain myself, but I explain it in a fashion to where it relates a positive message. It creates for good content and it addresses issues when they come back at me. Also, a lot of stuff's been coming up about that El Mago situation. I was crazy stuff. I'm getting thrown hella extra stuff. And I'm like, man, I just did an article off Borderline B and got another article from Los Angeles Times and got another article from a podcaster, put it all together. I made my own version of the video since a lot of YouTubers are already doing it. And now more information is coming. That's like, bro, everything's different. But I'm going to release it to you guys just out of, just to release it to you guys. So we'll, I'll get to that a little later. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up. And you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. Now, this is in regards to the video I did yesterday, which got a lot of love, like 30,000 views. I didn't think I was going to get that many views on a, on, a, on a particular subject that I have no knowledge of. But the, it was about the Norteños and Sureños in Pelican Bay. This is ain't a follow-up on new details. I'm going to leave that for somebody else. But this is what he said. He goes, sounds like you're calling for a reaction from the faction you claim to have no stake in. Even though you say you're not biased, of course, a part of you is still rooting for your old home team. Just keep it a buck, guy. For sure, my guy. I will keep it a buck. I will keep it all the way 100. Now, mind you, I came across that Pelican Bay information because I don't really look for it. You know, if a subscriber gets at me. A source gets at me and they contact me my email or Instagram or Facebook or wherever they do and say, hey, man, I got some information, you know, maybe you could do a video on it, you know, bring it to light. I would do so. But it's not like I sit here at my desk and go out my way to look for it. Most of the time, I'm just looking for cool subjects that I want to talk about, that I want to become familiar with, that I want to educate myself. All this process of this YouTube channel to me is me becoming self-educated because I'm not going to school. So, you know, YouTube has a substantial amount of information. Newspapers and reporters have a substantial amount of information. Other podcasters teach me information. So to me, this is a growth experience. This is an educational experience, an education that I didn't get to get because I was still stuck on my prison mentality in jail. So the prison guard was the one that was the first revealed this information. You know, he has a part one, part two, and part three. People put me onto that. I didn't watch the video. You know, I didn't, I, that is, this is that man's opportunity with the information that he came out with. You know, this is his shine on. Then everybody told me about a Converse perspective and his reaction videos. I didn't watch his neither because that's that man's opinion. That's that man's approach. That's how that man feels. It's, there's, it's these guys' opportunity to shine on this subject that I didn't come across first. So I left it alone. But when multiple people were asking me for my opinion on it, I said, okay, I made one phone call. Asked, hey, what happened real quick? They told me what happened. Okay, then. And then I said, and that's all I ever did was make that one phone call, relay the information to you. What I was told, I didn't confirm it. I didn't call the prison system. I didn't call nobody. And that was it. And I just gave you guys the best of my opinion. I said, if the facts were true, if this really took place, if these are the facts that I was told are on the basis of what took place in Pelican Bay. And then I just gave my personal opinion. Didn't know I was going to get the love that it did yesterday. But dude asked me, Am I rooting for the home team or do I want the, uh, the Norteños to react to the Sureños for what they did? See, it gets a lot deeper than that. We don't know if the NF stood by and let Tablas and everybody else whose names are getting thrown into this, hey, go ahead and take out one of our own. I don't even, it, 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 it bothers me to know that, you know, two Norteños were able to get locked in the kitchen or freezer or whatever they got locked into. That way the Sureños can engage on another Norteño. That, that threw me off, man. I find that just hard to believe that the lack of security because the Norteño program teaches safety and security at all time. You know, being alert and aware of potential and immediate threats. So how they managed to do that, I don't know. That's why the story was hard to believe. I just gave you the information. Then a lot of people were like, oh, it's because he was a black Norteño, the Mexican mafia don't want no, uh, want, don't want the NF recruiting blacks. They want to keep it all a raza. So much stuff comes up about this subject that it makes it even harder and harder. 
But no matter what I talk about, people will criticize me. Oh, it's false information. You're spreading the facts wrong. You're speaking false, whatever. When I'm just giving what you guys give to me and I interpret it. Now, am I rooting for the home team? No, I'm not. But if you haven't understood the objective of my YouTube channel, it's this. It's very simple. You know, I expose these or prison organizations and this political lifestyle and how treacherous and how scandalous and how gruesome it can become because I'm just trying to stop the violence now. I'm trying to stop the people that I once represented and the people that I once went against and called my oppressors, my opposition, from getting hurt and from falling for the BS that I used to fall for all the time. And for the people that fell for it before me who ended up on the SNY. And we all now are just prime targets to these organizations. Now we're the immediate threats. Now we're the potential threats because we went SNY. Or we're dropouts. Or we're YouTube snitches. And we're actual confidential informants. Or we wore a wire against these organizations. All of that. The moral of this channel was to show people that a lot of people that walked away from this gang lifestyle did it for a lot of legitimate reasons. But a lot of people did it for scandalous reasons. This lifestyle was not perfect. Now, just because I was a Norteño for a very long time, and just because they did me dirty, you know, like I said, I have my own moral objective and my moral obligation and why I do what I do and say what I say and make the videos that I make every day for you guys. I have my own objective. I have my own ulterior motive. And that was just to show these individuals what this lifestyle is really like. The lifestyle that nobody wanted to talk about. The lifestyle that everybody feared. It, it can't come to light, bro. Man, we don't want nobody to know about these scandalous ways. These guys kept everybody in the dark and blind. And if they knew, they put that fear in them and that intimidation in them. Like, bro, if you say anything about what's going on, you could lose your life. They went a long time, decades, without being revealed and being unmasked who they really are. I'm just taking the opportunity to show you who they really are. And it's up to the people to do if they want to continue to follow them, if they want to continue to be brainwashed by them, if they want to continue to be subjected to hardships and punishments and indignities and being mistreated by their own leadership, then that's on them. If these Norteños want to go hide underneath the stairs, that's on them. If these Norteños want to watch their brother get started by the opposition and pretend like they can't do nothing about it. Because their leadership said, hey, man, don't do nothing, man. That we don't even trip. We're going to take care of that. But we, we got money. To, we got cell phones coming in. Matter of fact, we got this kilo we all put in together. And you know what I mean? We got, we got things in the works right now that's going to make us thousands of dollars for the NF bank. Forget that dude. He wasn't making that much money anyways. Or forget that dude. He disrespected the opposition. That's what he gets. Should have kept his mouth shut. I don't know what took place in Pelican Bay. I really don't. But let me give you an idea. Since you want to say I'm rooting for the home team and that I want the Norteños to react to the Southerners, what they do or don't do, it's none of my business. I don't have a dog in this fight. I really don't. I'll just be right here reacting to however they react. If they say, nah, child, is they're going to let it be, then I'll be right here saying what I need to say. And if they react, then I'll be here right here saying what I need to say. It doesn't matter. But let me tell you this, right? Let me point it to you like this. This will be, this will be the best way I put it. Say you're on a busy street. Traffic is coming. You got a lot of people out there in the streets walking around, but then you got traffic and you got cars and you got careless drivers that want to, don't want to follow the rules of the road and want to speed up and want to honk or trying to get to their destination. You know what I mean? It's driving out of control, but you see a lady, you see an old man, he's, um, you know, crippled. He's walking with a walker. He's blind or he's deaf of hearing. So he doesn't hear the car coming, but he's about to cross the street. But you know, this careless driver is not planning on stopping. He's too busy well, I'll tell you your motive of where he wants to go, where he needs to be maneuvering through traffic. Are you going to sit there and watch that old man cross that street and possibly get hit by that car? Or are you going to intervene and hold that old man and pull him back and be like, hold on, bro. It's dangerous right now. Let me, let, me, uh, let me find a way to get you across the street peacefully so that way you don't get hurt. Take that same concept and apply it to the concept of what I'm doing when I talk about the Norteños and Sureños and what took place in this situation. That's all I've ever been doing with my videos. You know, there's a Norteño faction, there's a Sureño faction. Don't forget, I never became an NF member, even when I had the opportunity to do so. I was still proud to be a Norteño soldado, and so, Nuestra Raza, Hermano, whatever you guys want to label it, Northern Structure. I was proud to be that man a long time ago, and I was discouraged when they took that from me. And that discouragement became resentment, that resentment became revenge and retaliation. Now I'm just on the road to redemption, to clean it all up, to say, you know what, I'm glad I got away when I could and when I did. But for me to sit here and talk about prison politics and criticize both sides 
and criticize the manpower who followed these prison organizational leaders, what am I doing? What am I really doing? What I'm trying to do is open everybody's eyes up. It's up to them. I'm just trying to give these individuals an opportunity to think for themselves and become their own entity or finally stand up and say, you know what? Enough is enough. We're tired of being mistreated. We're tired of getting taken advantage of. We're tired of sitting on the sidelines and watching a good friend of ours or a good brother of ours or a homie from Alvario get slaughtered because this dude felt like he wasn't felt like it was within his power and nature to do so just to flex his muscle because that's all it looks like. All these dudes are grumpy old man, powerful political figures with money and connections, and everybody has to listen to them. Prison's starting to look like an adoption agency or a babysitting or a daycare. It's like a bunch of old men taking care of a bunch of kids who are being told to listen and being told what to do. That's how much watered down the prison society and prison political nonsense has gotten, where all I'm trying to do is show these people, hey, man, at some point, bro, take matters into your own hands. At some point, take the initiative to think for yourself. Because what you got now is the NF that came out from the shoes and told everybody, hey, man, there ain't no need for your guys' leadership no longer. We're the ones out here. We're the ones with the last say. So we're the ones that's going to say what goes. You wait for that filter. So now you got a bunch of bystanders and onlookers. They're not even manpower no more. They're not even foot soldiers. Limiting in their potential. See, back then, the NF was in Corcoran Shoe and Pelican Bay. So Norteños were allowed to become leaders. Norteños were allowed to dig in and find their potential, their talent, their growth, their wisdom. Norteños were allowed to be placed in predicaments where they had to make educated decisions, smart decisions, had to think about the best interests of the people. These NF came out, started recruiting all these underqualified individuals and left the rest of the individuals with nothing to do. No say so, no room for opportunity, no room for growth. So they're just standing by letting everything happen, but they can't react because they're waiting on you know, NF protocol. They're waiting on the writings and the wordings of the NF to situate the situation. Well, what happens when all these NF get snatched up and they're gone or they get blasted off the yard or they go back to Corcoran Shoe? You got a bunch of underqualified individuals with no level of education because they weren't being taught nothing because they got reduced to just being mere standbyers and onlookers and followers. You're going to leave them in an ugly predicament where they're going to get taken advantage of by a population that's already educated, that already knows the business, that already knows what they got to do. Because I did hear a conversation that was taking place in one of the prison yards that the Sureño factions watch my videos. And they go out and they talk amongst each other like, hey, man, man, what he's saying is facts. What he's saying is true, man. He's right about these fools. You know what I mean? If they start a revolt and revolution or a mutiny and go against their own manpower and their own leadership, that's on them. At least they finally stood up to political powers and finally showed who they really are. Because think about it. Every facility has all these prison organizations. And that for Mexican Mafia, there's like one or two or three. But Sureños and Norteños are deep as hell. If they really wanted to, who, who, who's responsible for these organizations being as big as they are? It's the blood, sweat, and tears of the manpower. If they wanted to get rid of these two Mexican Mafia members of the yard, send them to the hole. The rest of the yard belongs to them. They can go back to their old ways, their old routines. If, even if it's slaughtering each other, I understand the concept of law and order and leadership and governance. They can do it with themselves if they wanted to. But even if it doesn't come to that, even if it's just a wake up call when they finally just resist and say, you know what, we're going to take out our map, our leadership and we're going to just teach them a lesson and try to humble them. Maybe that's what these guys need is a humbling experience. You know, the Debo situation, the Debo of your neighborhood, you somebody he's going to bully everybody he wants to finally somebody just beats him up and puts him in his place. And he comes back a little bit more humble. That's part of what these individuals need. A reality check, a rude awakening that everybody that works for them made them as big as they are. They didn't even remember that. But I'm not going to sit here and root for one side because that used to be my past. No, be my past, but just because that was my past, they did me dirty and I did them dirty. Plain and simple. There is no retribution. There is no reconciliation for that. So I don't need to be sympathetic and I don't need to take their side. But as a good leader and with a powerful voice that I've been able to develop with this YouTube channel, I'm not going to sit here and watch a lot of these individuals get slaughtered and get bullied and get oppressed and suffer any more indignities if I can make a difference. And I'm hope my, my videos and my information that gets provided to me and I do it publicly for everybody to listen to is because I know my videos are being watched in these prison yards. I know the streets are watching my YouTube videos. Half of it don't like me. Half of them want to gun me down. And the other half is like, you know what? I agree, bro. Totally get it, bro. I ain't finna throw my life away for these guys. For what? You know, my YouTube channel and a lot of my audience members that say that I have that powerful voice, 
I have the opportunity to use it. Why wouldn't I use it? Why would I sit here on YouTube and just instigate a war between North and South amongst the brown culture so everybody else can just watch it, observe, watch and observe and laugh like, look at these fools. They don't know how to act. Look at these fools. After 50, 60, 70 years, they're still slotting each other over nothing, over 50 papers, over yards, over pull-up bars, over prison power. Do you realize that all this prison power that these guys glorify, that these guys thrive off of so bad, it's just another form of oppression? and being isolated in a penal system, they limit themselves because that's all they think about is taking over this yard, bringing in this drugs, grabbing this cell phone, yada, 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 yada. All these organizations started off under the concept of protecting, defending the people, but that concept was abandoned a long time ago. So if I could do my best to try to reinstill that protection and defending the people and stop these guys from going to war, stop these individuals from looking up to this improper leadership, then why shouldn't I do so? That's always been the basis of my channel. I'm not rooting for one side. I don't even want to see them go to war. But if it happens, it happens. And I'm just going to be right here reacting like everybody else does. So I hope I answered your question to the best of my ability, man. Thank you for uh, asking me that kind of question. I really do appreciate these kind of questions and these kind of comments that allow me to grow and allow me to express myself more in depth. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.